It's 1976. Here we see a school bus where 26 children were on board in this bus. They were hijacked and taken away for 27 hours. 16 of these hours, they were buried underground. There was a child psychiatrist, Leonard Terra. She followed them for over a year, talking with the children, interviewing them. They'd been buried for 16 hours. They thought they were going to die, you know? These experiences were making huge impact on the children. And she wrote this book, Too Scared to Cry. In one of the sentences in the book, Leonard Herr says that life is not long enough for these children for this to go over by itself. Because this was the leading theory at this time. It will pass away by time. Time will heal it. When she wrote this book in 1981, this was the first book in child psychiatry that was describing children's reactions to traumatic stress. So the field we are talking about now is relatively new. The whole point of the program we're talking about is to help the children to turn the alarm switch off when there is no danger. If they don't, they will fall out of school. My name is John Schultz. I work here at the university as a professor in educational psychology. When I really started working with children being affected by war, the reason for that was actually that Norwegian Refugee Council invited me to northern Uganda. This was in late 2006. This followed a, a long period, I think it was 22 years of civil war, and it was a brutal war, rapes, killings, mutilation, and thousands of children at that time was um, abducted and turned into child soldiers. The children said that we, we don't sleep because the children were sleeping at school. And, and the reason for that turnout was that was the only place that they actually felt safe enough to sleep. I went to back to Norway and we put together a, a program to try to fight the nightmares. So when you have the nightmare and wake up, you are reliving one of the worst experiences you had. This is for 1093, I believe, children. And this is so fascinating, you know? You're starting up here with five nightmares per week, in average. And we, for the majority of them, you see, it steadily decrease over the eight weeks that the intervention lasts. And now they're down at somehow one or two nightmares, but 60, 70% gets it all the way down to zero. It's, it's not that dangerous to talk about a nightmare during daytime. And that's what we do. We create a safe setting where you can talk about the terrible thing. You, you can't change what happened. She was witnessing beheadings and, and that can't be changed. But what we can change is her nightmare. Hi, Michelle. Hi, John. How are you? <laughs> so Welcome nice seeing you. Welcome to our yeah. Bush Hamwood ah, Education Center. Thank you. Thank you. Very glad to see you. We'll see who is the most important time. Who is the most important time? We'll put our hands in front until we can make a connection. I lost. Okay. And in the cycle, mostly we have uh, Syrian refugees. Right. And then you have integrated the better learning program into the daily teaching, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, yalla, ta'a. Shwai ya'asot wati, a'asot a'ala, yalla. Yalla, Amira. Yalla, Amira. 
I think it's very interesting to come here and see how the program is slightly changed from country to country. Because some of these children have never been to school. And they have severe stress. They might be traumatized. They are, some of them are traumatized. And they're living with traumatized parents. Day-to-day -day triggers are frequent. It could be sound, something you see or a thought you get. But more severe than that is, of course, new traumatic events. Um, there was an earthquake uh, not long ago, and of course, the Beirut port uh, blast. Welcome. So nice seeing you. Yes, it's good. <laughs> nice a long time. Yes, yeah. it's a joy to uh, see you again. Likewise. Well, I'm sorry to meet right here, but yes. it's, a, it's a symbolic place as well. Yes, but uh, it's very important also to remember, yeah. not to forget, the horrors that this uh, event caused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just being here gives you some sense of the, the massive uh, the, impact of it, yes, explosion. Yes, yeah. all the living and the dead victims yeah. of the explosion, yeah. uh, some of them are still suffering until today yeah. with their traumas yeah. and uh, uh, houses that got demolished uh, yeah. because the impact of this explosion was really much further than its place. The damage was, was felt very far away yeah. from this exact yeah. point. Beirut and the whole of Lebanon, really. But, yes. uh, but I'm also thinking about the Syrian refugees yes. who have experienced trauma in Syria and coming here and get this additional trauma. Yes, seeking uh, refuge and seeking uh, more peace and security. On top, yes, it was the explosion. Yeah. That was really very uh, devastating for mm. all. But now we are going, right, to meet survivors yes and to see how they experienced it yes okay now we're going to see uh, Swahat uh -huh. uh, she's uh, 12 she was 12 years old when she came to us uh, to our centers for the emergency response right. after the Beirut blast uh, she followed all of the emergency response cycle uh, for the four weeks then she was suffering from uh, recurrent uh, nightmares so uh, she benefited from four individual sessions mm -hmm. so she could learn how to manage better nightmares oh wow, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to meet her to see to see the long term effect. Now it was a terrible situation you were in in Syria. When did you manage to flee? But then, then you came here and the nightmares continued. Mm. So this, this is the nightmare. First of all, I ask you, is it okay that we can ask you a little about your uncle? I'm not 
في سياق بي على الأول وين بس أهلي رجعوني على البيت صرت بعد أبكي وأصرخ كنت ما بدنا نم الليل كثير بسبب إني أحلم في العمل أنا آه ما بعرف صراحة لأنه ما بعرف ليش بالضبط قتلوه And this became your nightmare. You started to dream about this. When I tried to change my dream, I tried to change the dream. We changed the dream to this. We were all sitting at home, waiting to eat in the house. It was my mother, my uncle, and my brother, and my uncle, and my uncle, and my uncle, and my uncle. هون يمكن لما حولنا الحلم انه كان عم يقعد معنا كلياتنا هو صح مش حقيقة بس حسيت انه شوي احسن I can see you are very happy here it's a good atmosphere and I'm fascinated how the two of you managed to work together to transform one of the most terrible experiences you had into a regular thing because you came to the center directly after the, the, the Beirut port blast. Yeah. Where, right. Where were you when the blast happened? In the house. I saw the fire from the top. So all of us, Fatima, and Rami, were here. Then I told my mom to see the fire. I saw it. My mom came out. My mom told me to go to the fire. And then I saw the fire. And then I saw the fire. And then I saw the fire. لما نفاجأ إحنا كنا هون تصرنا هون كل أيامنا فكت إنه جاء طيارة ضربت وكانت مخيفة كان بيقولوا إنه راح يرجع يصير انفجار كمان فالهيك كنا نخاف. Did you sleep anything? مش كتير. When did your nightmare start? هلا قبل وبعد أنا. Because you had nightmares before this. How often did you have nightmares? مش بس إنه بالأسبوع بحنا مرتين. Did you get more nightmares after the port blast? Hmm. Actually, I I would just like to ask you: Do do you have nightmares now? Not so much. Okay, not a lot, but you have some nightmares. Hmm. When was the last time? I would say, can I enter? Min hadak el swabzan. Last week you had one. Yeah. بحب أقول للولاد اللي مثلي إنه بيحلموا بأشياء بشعة ولازم إنه يغيروا حلمه من شيء من شيء بشعة على شيء حلو بظن إنه رح يتغير كل أفكاركم لشيء حلو رح تنسوا شوي مع الأيام كل شيء صار معكم بشع وبعمركم ما تقرروا إنه ما تحققوا حلمكم بأسباب معينة إنتوا What we aren't doing, what we're trying to do, well, we're working directly with the nightmares, but getting rid of the nightmares doesn't solve everything. But what we manage to do by getting rid of the nightmare is to reveal your um, coping strategies um, to empower you to work on other things in your life. And that is, I think, what we saw going home to the girl that there's so much other things, challenges going on in her life. Being a refugee living here, uh, there are reminders of the war uh, everywhere, right? This is a trip and, and I am getting exposed. And I need to leave some of this behind here. I have to leave it here. But I also need to bring some of it back home, right? And I need to combine these two roles being the professional researcher and, uh, and being me. But I will go back. I will go back to the snowy mountains of uh, Tromsø and, uh, and, and work on integrating these two roles. I think this place means more and more to me, coming out in the, uh, in the wilderness, being a part of nature. Ah, it feels good.
And it's a definite contrast to being in a war zone, working with children affected by war. I do acknowledge and I do appreciate the, the vast numbers of people that we actually managed to change their lives. I do acknowledge that. And, and that is the driving force for, for all of us working with the Better Learning Program. That is why we're working with it. But uh, again, what might look like being humble is more, uh, I think, protecting yourself from, uh, from the trauma. And if you dive into that, it's so overwhelming in a way. Many stories that sticks sticks with me, but I, I think there are many stories from the beginning when I started out in northern Uganda interviewing former child soldiers. They were so, so brutal and so inhumane what they had experienced, but, but the challenge is that they keep repeating. When you go to another conflict zone, well, it's not the same story, but it's the same feelings they have, right? So I don't think it's, for me, it's not about the story anymore. It's more about the feeling they have of loss, the feeling of being traumatized due to war. But I also think when, when I've been doing this for quite a few years, being in conflict zones, I really now feel the need to take better care of myself. It's not an option, it's a, it's a need. And of course, there are many, many particular instances that, um, that I wished I didn't see and hear about, but, uh, uh, but you have to deal with it and, uh, and I'm not afraid of it.